Uh -huh. We are streaming live on Facebook. Get started with our school song here. Hey, hi, yeah, hey. Hey, hi, 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 hi,
How medakwe pi yushki wa chia kampi cha te wa stea you hana pe chi zapi ake elaja hopkins de mie wa kchinjo wa kpa de chia daya ya hipido medakwe pi hello everybody and welcome to the virtual new student orientation day here at Fort Peck Community College i am elaja hopkins the vice president for student services uh, we are streaming live from Fort Peck Community College uh, on our Facebook page, and we are also uh, utilizing the Zoom platform. So again, uh, thank you and uh, for, for joining us here in Facebook world. And uh, we want to welcome all of our students and, and thank them for, for choosing Fort Peck Community College. Uh, we have an agenda today that, that's relatively short, uh, but we are live streaming this and it will be archived. Um, and just a few little ground rules before we get started, it really kind of help us out with the uh, the programming here, is if you could uh, mute yourself unless you plan on speaking, uh, that would be really helpful. Um, we, sometimes there's a, an echo that happens, I'm getting some reverberation. So if you could do that, that would really help us out. Um, and in true Buffalo Chaser fashion, whenever we start off uh, any meeting, we always try to uh, start off with a prayer. So I have asked uh, Dekshi, Mr. Tommy Christian, if he could say an opening prayer for us. Oh, Tushka, can you hear me? How? Oh, that's a tool. Oh, me talk you happy day. I have happy. He had a wash day. No, ha. Rushi mana o na omakia gna gupta. I'm be tu kile me chante ta o agla ke na ha na pe chuza pelo. Oh, he chaje me thawa na wan mi chage. Doba imachiape, Ushimala Omakia Wuchikia. All my relatives, again, uh, we'd like to welcome you all here to our student orientation. And of course, it's going to be archived so the students be able to catch up with themselves as they kind of see fit on uh, Facebook Live and all that good stuff. But again, it's it's uh, going to be a kind of a different experience for not only the old ones, but the new ones coming in. And so we have to always take that into consideration. So uh, the discipline. environment in spite of the fact that a lot of it will be virtual so that's how I'm going to share in a good way uh, to all of these things that help us out in a spiritual way but uh, help me out my relatives if you would and just bear with me as we go to this higher power that assists each and every one of us and I'm going to ask you in a good way I lost a nephew in South Dakota uh, last night so it's a very tough day for us uh, Lilo but uh, if you could uh, just remember my niece, Johnny, um, uh, in, in a good way as she lost her son. So, look at it. Why not? Yeah, yeah. Ha, ha, hey, atu kashila wakataka tadeo ya doba. Unchi makana makaina. Naku mitaki epi wanagi makpea ktaya ge. Ho choka ekta hiopo. Unchi akeni daki epi naha ampetu kile naha. Wayawa Oyateki, we chasha bile, we apile, naha okia chawa ushu we chalapo. Kixiapo mitaki api naha itanchi api, uh, moon spekia Oyateki, we chasha bile, we apile, uh, chunk u washte unk upi, okia chawa ushu we chalapo. A ke to kashila makanta gadixiapo mitaki api agichita oyate kizuya ekta naha chanku washte unk upi we chasha bile na wea bile ushia ke. Aha he to kashila na wakantanka oyate oyasi chanku luta aga omani o we chakiapo ushi we chalapo. A ke naha again my grandfathers as we do these things we understand the importance of coming to you and humbling ourselves to all that help you in your daily activities as you try to support us in our walk in this red road of understanding so we ask that you remember those that are having a tough time with this illness that are having a tough time 
with uh, walking with the mournful heart, and we ask you to see this. this way. We're going to ask you to help us to understand the importance of this virtual experience that we're going through, that we can continue to adapt, adjust, and be resilient in the manner in which we choose to go forward. We're thankful, my grandfathers, for all the good things that you helped us with, especially those in our leadership positions. We ask that you watch over their families and their relatives and their extended families as they continue to receive that support for them. We ask that you watch over all of our teachers, all of the faculty that are here that will support the efforts of those that are coming to our institution to make themselves a better life and create a better life for themselves. So we pray in that way as we come to you on this day, as we understand the importance of this exchange. We're pitiful people. We understand the importance of our warriors and as they defend this freedom that we sometimes take for granted. But at times like this, we definitely appreciate. We pray for all their safety and their safe return as they bring those stories of survival back to us to help us understand the importance of their efforts that they went forward and did unconditionally. We're grateful for many things, my grandfather. So on this day, in, in, in helping those that are having a tough time uh, with this sadness and this loss of loved ones in this recent times here, we ask that you watch over them. Good, good, give them good roads on this day to wherever they may be traveling and so that we, they can return to us safely in a good way and we can continue to support them in efforts that we may not fully understand that we have within us, but at times like this, with this compassion, this empathy uh, that we exercise to de develop our virtues and to make ourselves strong, we are thankful for this opportunity, my grandfather. So as we do these things, um, Doc, that's a actually beautiful prayer. Uh, thank you for that. Um, I also want to take the time to introduce um, our administrative team. I'd like to start off with uh, the president of our college. She has a great story to share, but she is um, a source of inspiration for many of us. She started off here as a student and worked her way all the way on up. And now she's our, our Itansha. She's our leader. So I'll give her the floor. Good morning. What a wonderful day. Today's kind of uh, just a little bit strange. It's like normally we, we're able to get together and laugh together and eat together. And, you know, we're just getting used to a new new world right now. Hopefully we'll change back soon. Um, anyway, um, I'm so glad to see you online here and you know you have a wonderful day ahead of you um good morning faculty also um you know i, I guess i do tell story the, my story every time i have student orientation um and i just like to tell you students that you know the fort peck community college is a wonderful opportunity and i'm so glad that you selected us to be um your school of choice. Um, I was where you're 30 some years ago, I was where you were sitting. Um, I came in these doors, had six little children. Well, no, I had five and I was pregnant. So, and, you know, worked my way all over campus and, you know, here I am. And I, and I can honestly say who would have thought, who, who would have thought I certainly wouldn't have 30 years ago, but, that's what this institution can do for you. You know, it, it's changed the life of my entire family and many, many of our faculty and staff here's lives also. Um, I mean, right there, faculty and staff who's online, raise your hand if, if you were a student at Fort Peck or have taken classes. We're, you, we're, we're, we're a product of Fort Peck Community College and we're, we're, we're here for you. We will, um, you know, definitely our doors are open to you at any time. I just hung up on them. <laughs> our doors are open to you any time, you, you know, come in and see us. If you need help, give us a call. 
we are practicing social distancing on campus. So, you know, wear your mask. Um, you know, you have any issues you need to, you know, anything you need us to help you with where there's somebody here for you at all times. Our website is a great, great place to look for updated information, um, what's happening on campus. Um, we, we have um, support people here and you guys will be able to go through that today. Elijah and his team will um, let you know what services we provide. So yeah, it's been it's it's been a crazy last year, but we you know we're hopefully providing all all of the tools you need to attend your classes. And uh, thank you, and you guys some time on campus. Hey, thank you, Haven. Thank you. Um, I'd also like to introduce uh, Vice President Craig Smith, if he's on the call. If he could do an introduction, that would be awesome. Okay, Craig Smith might not be on right now. Oh, okay. Hey, uh, um, I guess... Uh... I too would like to uh, welcome all the uh, new students on the call to uh, that are beginning or continuing or coming back for their education. Um, great time to be coming back uh, since everything's free this semester. Um, and, uh, you know, we have a lot of things going on. We're uh, reaching out to uh, um, a lot of students um, providing a lot of resources this semester that uh, we find ourselves uh, in the middle of this pandemic. And so, uh, um, as Haven stated, um, you know, we've, we've always been like a great big family. Um, faculty and staff across campus are willing to, uh, you know, bend over backwards to make your, make sure your experience here at the college is, is um, as successful as it can be and um you know willing to uh, assist in any way possible we've got um you know some great faculty some great classes and uh um i think you'll find that uh, every corner you turn there'll be somebody there to help you so uh again um you know thanks for choosing fort peck community college as your um educational institution and uh, we look forward to this semester and helping you Thanks. Thanks, Thanks, Elijah. All right. Thanks, Craig. Um, I'd also like to introduce um, the Vice President of Academics, Ms. Carrie Schumacher, if she's on the call. There. Good morning, everybody. Um, thanks for the great welcome, Haven and Craig. Tommy, the prayer was wonderful. Um, I'm Carrie Schumacher. I'm the interim vice president president for academics and vocational education at the college. Um, been associated with the college for about 20 years now. Um, and I really have to, to reiterate what, what everybody has said, that it, we are a team, we are a family at the college. Um, and I've asked the faculty to join us all virtually today to um, provide support. And, and since we're in a new it's a learning curve for all of us, this virtual type of education that we're learning in. And so many students are used to seeing our faculty wander the halls and being able to walk into their office and maybe vents because they've established that great relationship with their faculty or their instructor for various classes. That um, I, I want our students to know new and returning that faculty are here and they're committed to providing the best experience they can, even in this virtual environment. Um, if there's something as a student you're struggling with because Canvas is new to everybody, Cengage is new. New to us that have welcomed you on this call, your, your instructors.
Okay, it looks like we're having a little bit of uh, technical difficulties with the internet on Carrie's side. Um, she might be able to rejoin us. Uh, and if she can, uh, I guess we'll just let her pick up where she left off. Um, there's a few other members of our administrative team. I'd like them to introduce themselves and then maybe we can go into some faculty introductions real quick. But I, I did wanna see if um, Olivia Headdress um, is uh, available to introduce yourself? So, <clears throat> hello everybody. My name is Olivia Hedress. I am the director of our teacher training program, which is our two plus two program with MSU Northern to get your bachelor's in elementary education. Um, so if anybody is interested in education, have any questions, you can come see me. My office is upstairs and greet the dawn. You can call me or email me. Um, I also do some advising of education students, and I'm currently also um, overseeing our NATTEP program. So anybody who is in automotive technology, media tech, truck driving, welding, business technology, information and networking, diesel or communication, you can, you can be a part of the NATTEP program, which gives a monthly stipend. So if you have any questions, I encourage you to come see me when you're registering for classes. You can ask about it, see if you qualify. So definitely come see me, give me a call or ask any of your advisors when you're advising about it and I can answer any questions that you may have. Okay, awesome. Did you mention COVID too? Yes, so I also am currently in charge of COVID supplies. So if you happen to be on campus, um, you're going into any classrooms, there should, there's hand sanitizer, there's face masks, everything that you need to feel safe and comfortable. If you don't see any of that or you know, feel that you need any of that, please let me know and I will do my best to help you so that you feel safe when you are on campus and you're interacting with instructors or anything like that. Okay, all right, awesome. Thank you, Olivia. Um, and then also, I'm not sure if Rose, our business office manager, is on the call. Um, if she is, she can do a quick intro. I don't think she is. That's okay. Um, but I do believe that um, our VP for academics was able to rejoin us. So maybe she could uh, pick up where she left off and then we could introduce some faculty. Sorry about that, everybody. I usually have good connection at my house in the morning. Um, so welcome, everybody. Like I said, our faculty are committed to helping you succeed. Um, any issues or you need help with anything, please reach out to them or SVPs. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to the faculty. They've spent the last two days um, working to get their canvas set up. So I just want them to give a brief who they are and what program they're teaching. Um, so you guys can put faces to names since we're we're doing this all virtually. So we'll start with Judy. Hi, my name is Judy Ogle. I teach um, some compu a computer science class, some computer application courses like the PowerPoint um, and Excel. I am teaching media arts courses, uh, the Adobe Pro using the Adobe programs, which is Illustrator, um, doing some video editing and also the um, GIS courses. My office is located in the library down the IT hallway. Thank you, Judy. Bill Sordeberg. You're muted, Bill. Good morning, can you hear me? Uh, William Soderberg here. I teach diesel technology and some automotive classes uh, at the college. We will be having some, uh, we'll be having a class coming out of MSU Northern Heavy Duty Suspensions that we'll be doing labs here in Poplar. I'll be teaching uh, Electrical 2 and the Engine Performance. And we received a pretty good donation from Interstate Detroit Diesel in Williston. We got a gen set, so we'll be able to work on this little Mitsubishi uh, diesel gen set over the next semester and overhaul up some engines in this engines class. 
but uh, my office is down here in the vocational building. If you have any questions, stop by. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Bill. Um, Billy Norgard. Hello, my name is Billy Norgard and I teach business classes. Um, I've been an employee. This, uh, this is my 14th year working at FPCC. I also started out as a student here and I got my, <clears throat> my associate's degree here at FPCC. I got my bachelor's degree online through FPCC and also my master's degree all here at FPCC. If it wasn't for FPCC, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have any education. So I really encourage students to take advantage of that. I mean, it, if this is the best time, everything is free, get started. And once you get started, you'll get more comfortable with it. And then along the way, you'll decide what you want to do as a career. And we're all here to help you be successful in that. Um, let's see. I think that's, I think that's it. Anything else, Carrie, you want me to say? That's good. I think. And welcome. Um, Steve Harada. Good morning, everybody. Steve Harada. Like to uh, welcome all students that are coming back to Fort Peck or starting Fort Peck for the first time and wish you well in your academic endeavors. I also took many classes at Fort Peck Community College, continue to take a couple of classes. Uh, it's, a, it's just a great opportunity that folks in Northeast or all across Montana have uh, right here in Wolf Point in Poplar, Montana. I teach automotive technology. I, uh, we meet in person. We have all of the PPE and practice the uh, COVID-19 safeguards. So we have a very safe atmosphere down here. I'll flip my uh, camera here. We, I have a plexiglass shield uh, in my office. Uh, also, everybody is, is wearing masks. And then again, treating everyone with respect and providing, uh, I guess, social distancing in the new uh, normal that we're in. Hopefully we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. We're here to help. Uh, just if, if you have any interest in automotive or diesel technology or welding, we're all in the same facility down here. Largest building in downtown Poplar, Montana. I think probably the one of the prettiest buildings we have in downtown Poplar. So uh, if you got any interest, interest, call me, text me, come down and see us in person and we'll take care of you to the best of our ability. Again, good luck in your endeavors. Marge. You're muted, Marge. Yes, I just remembered. Hello, can you hear me now? Can you yes. hear me now? Okay, all right. Welcome and welcome to the family, uh, students, uh, returning students and new students. I'm Margaret Abbott. Uh, I'm an a educational fixture in Poplar. Many of you know me. Your parents may have been my students in uh, earlier days. I've taught, um, I'm approaching probably 50 years <laughs> as a teacher, taught in Poplar Public Schools for 30 years and then migrated here to the college. Um, for I've been here for, I think this is my 16th year. Uh, obviously, I think education is important. Education is the key. We cannot, we cannot improve ourselves. We cannot change our situation unless we know things. And that's what education is all about. And I, am, um, I, 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 uh, I praise you for choosing to further your education and for choosing us. Welcome to our Fort Peck Community College family. Uh, circumstances are very different this uh, year, um, and I know that it's difficult. Uh, I'm old school. It's really been difficult for me to switch to this um, uh, virtual type of thing. Uh, I teach the writing classes, public speaking, um, workplace communications, and I also have a yoga class. So we can uh, um, uh, go intensely in our classes, then relax at yoga. So uh, I 
plan on meeting with my students face to face to begin with and whatever the students are comfortable with, we will do. If we can face to face, fine. If we can't, we can go virtual. We can do both. So uh, my office is in the ROS building, the little red building between the science building and War Eagle Vision. And I, um, I uh, advise general studies. So if you are not uncertain as to what direction you wanna follow with your educational pursuits, uh, get into general studies and do some exploration. And um, as many of uh, 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 people who have spoken here before, it, they, uh, the college has helped them tremendously to find their path. So welcome, and I'm looking forward to seeing you. Thank you. Lloyd. All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Lloyd Sprague, I'm over here in Wolf Point. Uh, my office is in the Dumont building. I am, uh, I'm a first generation, not only a first generation college student, but a first generation high school graduate. So I'm always really excited to work with students who are kind of new to this experience and this process. Uh, I teach in the social work, psychology and addiction studies programs. Uh, I also have a couple other staff members, Carrie Sansler and Tina Holacek, who helped me in those programs. Uh, I do a little bit of grant work. I have a public health grant right now, so we're doing some work there. And I'm also the director of the 2 plus 2 social work program. So anybody who's interested in getting their bachelor's and master's degrees in social work, uh, I would be your point of contact for those programs as well with the University of Montana and the University of North Dakota. So um, great to see all these faces. I'm excited for the semester. and. Uh, I look forward to, to meeting all of you, hopefully one day in person. But um, if you need me, I'm, I'm usually at the Dumont building and I'm, I'm pretty easy to find. So thank you. Thank you, Loy. Guanashar? Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Ganeshwar Gautam. Uh, this is my fourth year in the college. And I'm a STEM faculty, uh, a little bit different courses teaching in the college from uh, uh, physical science, mathematics, statistics. Those are the courses I'm teaching this semester. My office is located at the Old Point campus. Uh, and uh, this semester, mostly I'm doing online classes. Uh, actually, I mean hybrid, some are online and uh, one science class I'm doing in the hybrid system. Uh, email, uh, office, office hour, I mean, uh, you can find me in the office or by email. And uh, welcome to all the new student and welcome back for the returning students. Uh, I think that is short for now. Thank you. Thank you, Guanashar. Dr. Kuhn. Good morning, students. Uh, my name is Steve Kuhn. I am, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, I am the science instructor here. I'm also part of the STEM faculty, and I uh, teach the uh, pre-health, pre-nursing degrees here at the college, and I'm over at the science building. That's where my office is. So if you ever uh, need anything or there are any problems, if you uh, need, uh, I've reached out to some of you, but if you haven't uh, contacted me, feel free to, to email me or, or call me or, or whatever so we can... Uh, figure out what classes you need and stuff like that. Um, I've been here about five years now and um, I'm not sure what else I can say. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just a uh, welcome and uh, hope I hopefully we'll uh, get to see you in person uh, very soon. Thanks, Dr. Kuhn. Um, Sasha. Okay, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, um, well, I'm Sasha Brownlee, and I'm from Wolf Point, this area. I did my undergrad and law school degrees at the university system. So 
I moved back here a couple of years ago. This is only my second year. So I'm learning a little bit with everybody, but um, I teach the criminal justice classes. I see a couple of my newer students on here. So I um, hope to talk to you guys some more, but um, all my classes are online this semester, um, but you guys can get a hold of me. My office is at um, Old Main in Poplar. Um, and you can email me anytime or my phone number to my cell phone is probably the best way to get me if anybody needs to get a hold of me right away. And even at night or weekends, I'll, I'll answer that back. And so if you guys have any questions, just get a hold of me. And I think that's all I have for right now. Thanks, Sasha. Um, Tony. I just got back in front of the camera. Um, hey, everybody. Hello. Good morning. Uh, I teach the information technology information networking technology degrees information the ones I teach is the IT uh, certificate it's a one-year certificate you sign up in the fall and you finish the following spring all the courses for that are in the in the catalog if you don't have one you can get it online on the on the college website uh, just look under the students uh, link follow for the, the college page and download the PDF file if you don't have a catalog. If you, if you need one, there's some at the Greet the Dawn. Ask for one. <clears throat> that one-year degree uh, in IT, uh, after you get that one-year degree, you continue on for a two-year degree if you want. But you could actually you know, become employable with that one-year certificate. Um, that's regarding if you do follow up and do some certification tests here in the lab. I'm located um, in the new library building, the James Shanley building, and uh, I'm, I'm never in the office, hardly ever. I'm in this lab a lot. Uh, I'm in JES9. Uh, just come on in um, if you need to talk to me this week to get signed up, if you're uh, already signed up for something uh, for this spring uh, schedule. If you're uh, retaking a class that you might have not finished or you uh, took it years ago and it's, uh, uh, it's not transferable anymore or it's outdated, you could sign up for the Microsoft Office. That's online, all online. Majority of my courses are all online. It's just that um, since we are um, in this COVID uh, predicament right now, we're going to continue on doing that. This... Um, Although, because I'm a vocational instructor, we are offering, uh, we'll be doing uh, Mondays and Tuesdays online, and Wednesdays and Thursdays we'll be in the lab. Um, as time progresses, if things get worse, if, if we have to go full online, we could do that as well, because a lot of your, uh, uh, the course curriculum that you utilize is, uh, uh, it's paid for, and you'll be able to access it anywhere with your, on your laptop, as long as you have internet. So if you're um, ready, if you're willing to sign up, you know, and get going, if, I know you've already did most of your paperwork and I'm trying to help some other students get going. Um, right now, if you're just basically got out of high school or if you're middle-aged and you still wanna continue your education, it's time to sign up. <clears throat> you're gifted, you're strong and you're needed, especially in your communities. And with that, I'll head it out. I'll say goodbye and come see me over here at JS9. Thanks, Tony. Let's see, we will go to Andy next. Okay, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Andy Archdale and I teach history courses and education courses. Um, I'll be doing all online courses for this next coming spring. Um, but I just want to remind all of our new students that we're new at this too, the online stuff. So don't think that you're the only one having problems. Please reach out and ask your instructor, ask anybody, and we're all going to do our best to help you because we realize that this can be a challenge for some people. So I, my office is in Wolf Point, um, and I just want to encourage everybody to have a good semester, um, to stay in contact with their instructors. And I think you'll do just fine. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Jarrett. Good morning. My name is Jarrett Benesnelk, and I will I am a business instructor, and I will also be teaching the painting and drawing classes. 
Started out as a student at Fort Peck Community College, had a lot of great experiences during my time as a student. Moved on to a four-year program in Utah. Uh, after graduation, I participated, oh, I work at a private equity firm, so I am an entrepreneur at heart. Consulted in the creation, buying and selling of businesses. It's a lot of fun, a lot of hard work, very difficult. So I'm an entrepreneur at heart and look forward to um, working another semester with you all. Thank you, Jared. Um, let me turn to my last page and see who I got. It looks like next is Jerry. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. My name is Gerald Archdale. I teach a truck driving at FPCC, and I welcome you all. Thank you. Good to see you, though, Jerry. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Mute yourself again, please. Jeremy. You're muted, Jeremy. I'm Jeremy Redstone. I teach the truck driving here at the college. Will you tell them where your guys' office is located, Jeremy, please? We are right east of the automotive building, the new building. Thank you. Carrie. Good morning. Good morning, we can hear you. <laughs> you can hear me, okay. I'm Carrie Sansever. Um, I am adjunct faculty, have been at FPCC for 18 years off and on. I'm teaching, um, like Marge, some yoga and intro to psych and personal health and wellness. I am a two-time graduate of FPCC um, with a uh, two-year degree in psychology and education. And FPCC built the foundation for me to go on to complete a master's degree in education slash school counseling, where I just finished 26 years at Wolf Point Schools three years ago. So in my retirement, I'm still teaching and a uh, great place to be. Thank you so much. Looking forward to a good semester. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, um, Barry. Hello. Um, I am Amin Ra. Everybody knows me as Professor Barry. I am the mathematics instructor um, here in Poplar. Uh, Dr. G, the Grand Wizard, he's in Wolf Point. Uh, you heard of him before. Um, I have a degree in mathematics uh, from my HBCU. Um, TCU's and HBCU's pretty coincide in legislation. So uh, we're pretty much cousins uh, in that respect. Um, I've been in love with mathematics since I was six years old. Uh, some of my favorite people were my math teachers uh, <laughs> growing up. Um, this is a dream job of mine. Um, even though this is my second job, uh, it is uh, definitely a passion of mine to be here. Um, it's my job, my job only to make, uh, try to make math as fun for me, uh, fun for you as it is for me. Um, so that's pretty much uh, my goal. So um, don't, uh, don't be afraid to ask any questions, um, any concerns you have. Um, I don't mind breaking it down very, 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 very uh, to simple, simple fractions um, so that we can get an understanding of it so that you can teach someone else. Um, and that's the biggest goal for me so that you can get comfortable enough with math so that you can teach others the same thing you were taught. So um, I have a very interesting way to teach it. Uh, my, my course evaluation from students have been very on the rise. Uh, not to pat me on all back, but uh, I'm doing pretty nice with uh, the online math. So um, trust me, if again, if you have any questions, concerns, I have my own private tutoring sessions where we can do one-on-one, -on -one, um, Zoom or in person. So um, even if the class is not enough time, just reach out to me. So. Um, let's have a good semester. I'm excited that you are uh, taking up the, uh, the adventure of uh, doing, uh, taking uh, classes at Fort Peck College. 
Thanks, Barry. I don't think I've missed anybody else. Is there any other faculties that I didn't see on the call? Um, thank you to all the faculty. Oh, Joanne's on. Yeah, I showed up a little bit late, so. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I'm new to the faculty, uh, just teaching environmental science this spring. And um, I have a bachelor's degree in wildlife biology and a master's degree in geography. I have about 17 years experience in the field in wildlife biology and as an environmental consultant. So I'm really looking forward to bringing that hands-on experience to the classroom and being able to teach about some real uh, world uh, life issues and how to solve problems, how we actually solve problems in the field. And um, hoping to get students out into the field this spring when it comes. So we will have some outdoor classes and things like that. So feel free to contact me if you're interested in environmental science and you're wondering whether or not you should take it and what the class is about, don't be afraid to contact me, so. Thank you, Joanne. Anybody else I missed that joined us late? Um, again, thank you to the faculty for joining us all this morning. I think it's, um, I think it's good for our new students, especially to put um, names to faces in this type of environment. So I appreciate you all taking the time to join us this morning and I'll turn it back over to uh, Elijah. Okay. Thank you very much, faculty. Thank you, Carrie. Super helpful. I think that's definitely one of the benefits of doing this uh, virtually. We're archiving it. So later on, students that aren't familiar with any of uh, the individuals that presented, any of the faculty member, now they have some facial recognition. So I think this is super helpful. So it, we really appreciate that. There's a few other um, staff members for student services that I would like to have them introduce themselves if they are on the call. Um, super important to get familiar with these individuals. They'll be doing some co-presenting later on in our agenda here. But uh, one of those individuals, if she's on the call, is uh, Brittany, Brittany Alden. If you could do a quick intro. You might be muted. Hi, everyone. My name is Brittany Alden. I am the student support specialist here at Wart Eagle Vision. I've probably talked with most of you. Um, I just wanted to say welcome to FPCC. Ooh, it's really ringing, sorry. Okay, I think that's probably good. There's just a lot of reverberation, but I appreciate that. Oh, okay. Um, uh, uh, Brittany, I think you're still muted. Sorry about that. You're muted. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry, it's really echoing, and I thought I unmuted. Can you not? It's unmuted. Yeah, we can hear you. Are you, are you done introducing, or are you? Okay. okay well, thank you, Brittany. Um, okay, it's Lynette Clark on the call. Good morning, students, faculty, administration. Um, welcome to our orientation today. I'm Lynette Clark, and I am the financial aid director. Um, so I want to welcome you, and um, I will. I can put my phone number in the messages. So if you want to call me and directly talk to me about financial aid this semester, um, I know that everything is free, but you're still entitled to um, scholarships and um, your federal aid also. So you can't bank federal aid. So um, meaning that you um, can't save it for another semester. And so it's going to be counted. So we might as well get you the funding that you're eligible for. So I will put my phone number in the mess messages here. And if you need it and want to give me a direct call, that is fine with me. Um, give me a call and ask me any questions you have. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Lynette. Uh, I think TRIO staff would be super helpful if they could uh, introduce themselves. Is uh, the TRIO director, uh, Suzanne Turnbull, are you on the call? Okay, she must not be on. Uh, what about Mr. David James? Are you able to 
do a quick introduction. Well, uh, good morning, uh, staff, faculty, administration, uh, new students and returning students to Fort Peck Community College. Uh, my name is David James. I am the student success advocate for TRIO, uh, located in the War Eagle Vision. And many of us have met before already, and I look forward to meeting with you again and finishing up on some stuff and uh, hope to talk to you again soon. Thank you. All right, thanks, Dave. Uh, there's a few other um, staff members. They might not be available. They might be with other students and whatnot. Um, but we do have the registrar, Michelle Day, and her assistant, uh, Jackie Spotted Bird. So if either one of them are on the call, I don't think I see their names on the list. Um, but they're super helpful. They're located over here at the War Eagle Vision building here in Poplar. You will uh, work with them directly to get registered for your, your courses. Um, also, who else is on the call? I believe we have other staff members that I don't think were given the opportunity to introduce themselves. Uh, Miss Lee Melbourne, would you like to do a quick intro introduction? Um, hi, this is Lee Melbourne. I am uh, a longtime student here, longtime uh, employee. I've been here for like uh, 27 years, I think. I, I do um, a lot of the reporting for the college, but I also teach cultural arts classes. I have two classes this semester, moccasin making and um, eating. I work out of the, uh, my classes are out of the Dumont building in Wolf Point. Um, I also help with email and JICS and all those good things, um, technological. So if you need help, uh, stop by my office in the JES building or the Dumont building. Bye. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so I think what we'll do is we will, we're a little behind on the agenda and that's fine. That, that's totally okay. What we're gonna do is I will share my screen and We'll get started on our presentation here. Let's see here. Slide show. Okay. So hopefully everybody can see the screen that I'm sharing. Um, this is the Fort Peck Community College Spring 2021 plan. And so uh, we will go over some of this in greater detail, but just uh, looking ahead, I want everybody to know kind of what you have in store here. Um, we're gonna be talking a little bit about the free tuition scholarship for all students. Doesn't matter if, you're, matter if you're taking one credit or 20 credits, one class degree seeking, or you're, you're non-degree seeking. Um, the Tokatakia scholarship, it refers to the future, it's the future scholarship, it will cover all tuition and fees. So don't you worry about incurring any bills here at the college for this semester, we got your back, we got you covered. So that's a super awesome um, thing that our college is doing. I don't know of hardly any other colleges that are doing that. So if you have any questions about that later on, we can we can talk about that. But I think the benefit obviously is that you are going to incur no bills and any scholarships or grants that you would normally get is goes right in your pockets, money in the bank. So definitely an awesome opportunity. Um, the other thing I think is super important and some of the, the staff and faculty administrators already touched on it is the fact that uh, we are doing our best to make the entire campus uh, COVID safety uh, measures in place. Um, so that's mask wearing, social distancing, uh, most of our classes are hybrid, okay, under the teaching and learning section here. Students can expect that in most cases, classes will be held remotely when feasible. Uh, certain uh, courses that might not be feasible might be some of the voc ed courses like truck driving and whatnot, but most of those will be, um, be remotely. And those that are held in person will observe social distancing and other safety protocols. Um, but then there are many of our courses that are purely online. So when you look at our course schedule later on, I can show you how to access that online. Uh, at the end of that course number, if it says 90, 
that is completely online. Okay, so you'll never go into course or your, your class. So just a little FYI on that. Um, some of our students get, especially on Facebook, there's a lot of questions, comments on Facebook. So we do our best to keep up on that. But that's a pretty common question. The other um, super important, let's see. The other super important, um, oops, I better go back here. Thing that I think is important for everybody that, that's listening on Facebook, if you haven't already enrolled, if you're on the, the fence about what you want to do, we do have free computers for spring enrollees. Okay, there is an asterisk with that. We have free internet and free Wi-Fi, but the conditions of eligibility on that are that you are at least six credits, which is basically two courses. Most courses are three credits. So you have at least six credits in your degree seeking. Okay, so if you can do that, that puts you in the eligibility category for free laptop and internet installation. Um, and the go-to person to get on that list is Miss Brittany Alden at Student Services. She did the introduction earlier. Uh, what we do is it's super helpful when you, if you're a new student, to complete that student um, uh, student survey, student profile survey. We'll cover that here in a little bit, um, the next slide. But that's how we ascertain if students need computers or internet. You'll have to make that disclosure. So um, we'll be updating that, and then we can do an install. But all this depends on you remaining a student, um, not withdrawing, uh, dropping below the six credits um, to remain eligible. Okay, so then we also have free backpacks and free meal, meal plans. So that's also a super, I think, helpful thing for students is we're going to keep you fed. Okay. So again, if you're at least six credits in degree seeking, you get $25 a week. If you are 12 credits or more, a full-time student, you will get $50 a week and that will start next week. And so we'll identify all the students that are currently in re uh, registered and you will receive a check in the mail to the address that you enrolled with that we have on file. So that's how we're going to get you your money to keep you fed. And then your backpacks will be available here at Student Services. So as soon as you register, you can stop over, pick that up, has some masks and all the different little goodies in there. So super uh, um, helpful. We're really trying to do our best to really meet the needs of all the students. Um, so free tuition, free fee fees, uh, hybrid approach to, to learning uh, in a COVID environment, free computers, uh, laptops, free internet, backpacks and meal plan. So that's really what you call an offer that you just cannot refuse. Uh, okay, next slide. And so hopefully, I'm not sure if Brittany has still has a reverberation, but if she could kind of do a quick overview on some of these steps, and then those of us that are on the call, we can kind of chime in as need be. So this slide that I'm sharing, um, I've sent this out to all students via your email, but this is the new student steps to registration. Okay, and you want you to, to mark all these off, and this is kind of how you get the ball rolling to get actually registered. Okay, so first, we'll have you guys, um, as a new student, you're going to go to fqcc.edu and do the online application. That's the first step. The second step is if you're a new student, you need to go see Jackie Spotted Bird and have your high school transcript and GED certificate available before you come in. Um, she can't register you without it. Also, if you're a returning student, you need to, I'm sorry, I'm really echoing. That, that's <laughs> okay, that's okay. I think, um, Right now, Brittany's kind of in a tough spot because there's a bunch of students and there's a bunch of computers out in their reception area. So it's picking up all the, the audio from that. So later on, we might have to hook her up with some headphones that'll kind of pull some of that. But, but that's fine. We can cover it here. I think David's on the call between me, uh, Dave, and Lynette. We'll just kind of, kind of roll with it, and that might be a little bit easier to hear. So on this document, what you'll see is apply today. And the way that you do that, you go to fpcc.edu. And then perhaps I could even share my screen real quick. 
to access this. Okay, so hopefully everybody can see my screen. Um, and from here, there's the online application. You click on this, and boom. You put your, your student ID number, your, your individual password, and that's how you can access your JIX account later. But you click right here. Click here to start filling out this application. So that's the first step. Stop sharing this, get back to the PowerPoint. Okay. So, and then at that point, uh, number two, we, we've made an exception for the AccuPlacer testing for students. Um, it's something that we'd still encourage students to do, but if you, in lieu of not having a high school transcript, um, we want to be able to know how to place students in your reading and writing and math skills. And so there is some, um, a quick test that you can take to give us an idea of where you test out in this range. It takes anywhere from, I don't know, maybe a half an hour to an hour to complete, but we are waiving that requirement for distance students. So you don't have to worry about that, but it's super helpful. If you got the time, you can come in and take it. Uh, it it do definitely doesn't take long. And then the schedule of classes. Dave, do you want to hop in on any of this part? Yeah, so uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, so we, we just went over the AccuPlacer part, which is waived. Uh, so right after uh, applying, if you're a student walking in the door here and we have you apply today, uh, you're, actually your next step would be uh, to see uh, Jackie or Michelle. Uh, they are the registers here. And then at that time, we would make you a student email up. Uh, you would get a schedule of classes from Jackie and Michelle, and then you would come back out and see either me or Brittany, and we would help you uh, fill out, we'd have you fill out a trio form, which is the department I work for. Uh, we'd help you fill out the American Indy College Fund, uh, your FASA, which is your free application for federal student aid, and uh, then we'd like give you a backpack and some other stuff, and uh, yeah, that's about, that's about it for that part. Okay, great. And then I think the main thing is that uh, there is a checklist. Uh, you, you come into student services, we can walk you through this over the phone as well. But each one of these steps have to get checked off before you can be actually registered. Okay. Um, and maybe under the AICF FAFSA applications, maybe our financial aid director, Lynette, can give us an update on that, what that might entail. Uh, yes, um, the American Indian College Fund application is, um, every student is eligible for it. Um, we really strongly am, encourage everybody to apply. We try not to um, deny anybody. So there is, um, there's also the, um, two applications on there. There's one that's a full circle application which is funded by the American Indian College Fund. They make the selections on those. Um, the closing date is May 1st, I believe. And then um, there's a TCU, which stands for Tribal Colleges and Universities. And um, they send me a check every semester. And then I have a, a committee of five that we go over the applications and we make a selection. Um, we, we determine the amount that the students are getting. Um, some of the scholarships um, will determine that for us. So we have to abide by their rule. Um, if a donor wants to pay somebody $2,000, then 
we pay that student $2,000, but the general fund, we get to make the selections. And then um, again, if you have more questions on that, I left my phone number in the messaging part so you can call me um, on that. But Dave and Brittany do a great job in um, sitting you down and helping you fill that out. You will have to um, put a picture in there and um, they don't like sunglasses. They don't like hats because these pictures will be going to donors that donated the money. So um, they like them to look as professional as they can be. Um, so you will be required to put a picture in there and then you will be required to, if you're a tribal member, you will be required to put your um, tribal ID in there or your tribal information. And then um, if you're not a tribal member, they ask you to put your driver's license in there. And then um, those applications go back into the American Indian College Fund Bank, but I do have access to um, all of the applications. So it's their application, but I have access to look at everybody. And if I can't see your application, if it's not complete, then I can't fund you because I have to be able to pull you off the list. So if you wanted to, you can always double check with myself or Brittany. And I um, believe also Lee Melbourne could also check for you too. Um, we could go in there and make sure that your application is complete. And the FAFSA form, um, it will be based on 20, 18 income. And so this semester you are completing the uh, 2021 application. I get students um, already that have been calling me and they have completed the 21-22 application, which will come in effect in August of 2021. So um, that's gonna be for next fall. So make sure that when you do the application for FASFA that you are doing the 2021 application. That is for right now. That's for That was for last fall that we already had and then this spring. And if you really feel ambitious, do them both. The um, next application you'll use 2020-19 income. If your income has drastically changed from 2018 until now, please give me a call and let's talk about it. I don't, I wanna make sure that you get everything that you're eligible for. I think I covered all of that. There is one more application for um, the GM Forte. Um, there, it's called a GM Forte application. And if you're in any of the, um, Basically, if you're eligible for any of the NACTEP um, application, then you could go ahead and apply for the Gianforte. It's more of a vocational trades application. So if you're in a vocational trades, um, you could go ahead and fill out that application too. If you're a full-time student, that is $1,000 a semester. And if you're a part-time student, it's 500. So they pay accordingly. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Lynette. Um, another little important tidbit is in order to be eligible for the Tokatakia scholarship, which covers all your tuition and fees, we are requiring you that you fill out that, that FAFSA. That's a requirement. So we want to encourage everybody that intends to take uh, courses here and you, you want the, the free option, make sure to do your FAFSA and visit with us. I think that um, all of these different um, websites that you got to go to the AICF, um, the FAFSA, everything it's online. We'll walk you through it. There's a little bit of, uh, I think trepidation. It feels a little bit, uh, intimidating if you're not savvy with some of the computer stuff yet, but our job is to kind of put you on the map to kind of get you familiar with that stuff. And so our staff is trained to be super uh, helpful and accommodating to kind of walk you through all those things. And so, um, and we can do it over the phone or through a Zoom call as well. I just want to make sure everybody's aware of that. Um, 
let's see here. And then, so email addresses, uh, our staff will hook you up with that. The email address will be uh, your first name, dot last name at student.fpcc.edu. It's crucial, absolutely crucial that you have your, your student email and that you know how to access it and that you're checking it regularly. Okay, so you will be getting an email. That's a condition of being a student. Um, if you don't like checking your email, you like using your Yahoo, uh, you know, I encourage you, it's part of your professional development as a student to start checking your student emails at the college because there's a ton of information, especially in a virtual environment that we're going to be sending to you. And it's, it's important that you be able to do that. And later on in our discussion with the Canvas uh, learning management system that all students are going to be required to use to access a lot of your coursework, um, it's tied to your student email. How do you activate these things? So again, we'll walk you through some of that stuff later, but just I want to reiterate that how important that is. There's always information blasts from the college, student services will be regularly getting a hold of you via your, your student email. Um, and the admissions officer, I don't think they're out there on the call, but as part of your registration process, students, you're going to need your high school or GED transcripts. The official, unofficial won't work. Uh, any, if you're a transfer student, uh, you need your other college transcripts. If you're already a student here, don't worry about it. We have your records on file. But if you went to school at the University of Montana for a semester and you, you're, you came back home, uh, you're going to need to get that information as well, especially because some of your courses might transfer. It might save you some time. Okay, we want to make this as seamless and easy on you as possible to help you get your degree. The admission officer will also process your application and give you a JICS account and password. Later on, one of our staff members will give you a, an overview on JIX. Sometimes it's called JICS, JIX, I didn't, but we will uh, hopefully make you feel a bit more comfortable with that. And then uh, once you get through that part, our registrar will kind of walk you through the, your academic plan based upon what your goals are as a student. Not what our goals, but what are your goals? And so we have about 26 degrees and programs. And one of those is, um, it has a specific sequence of courses. It's a plan. And so we want to make sure and explain to you what that is, aligns with your career goals, and also aligns with whatever your your personal limitations and in your personal life, whether that's work or whether that's childcare, whatever that is, the registrar will work with you on that. Um, if um, hopefully your advisors are available, we would prefer that you would actually contact your, your advisors. Every degree and program will have an advisor, an academic advisor. And some of our student services staff will kind of help facilitate that conversation between you and your academic advisor. So for example, if you're a business student, uh, Jared uh, Medicine Elk or Billy Norgard are the advisors for that. So they're gonna walk you through what all those courses are, what the general ed requirement requirements for that degree are, what all the prerequis prerequisites are for that individual program. And so you have to get uh, to know your advisors and you will be assigned an advisor if you're degree seeking. And so. Some of our staff members like David James will hook you up. We'll be like, okay, here's the courses that you need. Here's what's uh, offered uh, this semester. They'll point you in the right direction to access the, the schedule of courses. And uh, towards the last step there, the registrar will give, print you out your schedule for the student. But again, you know, for the semester, you know, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday is course A. Course B is Tuesdays and Thursdays. It lays it all out, the location, the course number, um, the dates that they start, all that information is right there, but you will also be able to access that information through your GICS account. We'll cover again that a little bit more later. Uh, financial aid, send to financial aid. Again, uh, Ms. Lynette Clark, she will process any uh, paperwork that needs to get done, make sure that you are indeed in the system. And then some of our student services staff, we will put you out in front of these computers out here in the Wargill Vision Building possibly the Dumont building if you're in Wolf Point, but we will do an overview on Canvas JIX. Um, our student ID card, uh, we are not processing IDs at this moment. We will make an announcement for step 16 on those uh, card distribution days. You'll have to get your, your picture taken and uh, we'll hook you up with that. But then also 
on the website is the student profile survey. So if you're a new student or you're a transfer student and you weren't here last semester, you have to take that survey. It's a requirement. Okay. And then step number 18, books will be available at the Greet the Dawn Auditorium. So we do have a few updates on that. There was an email sent out, sent from me to all students that are currently enrolled as of this morning. Um, through the Canvas website, there's a ebook company called Cengage. Cengage is how you will access a lot of your ebooks. There may be a few classes where you still have physical books. There will be a announcement made on when to access those and how to access those. But for now, you really need to get familiar with uh, the Cengage product. And that's a whole nother uh, discussion, but I think it's super important that you um, are aware that that's how you are going to be doing a lot of your, um, accessing a lot of your books for your courses. So they're, they're all tied together, so. Okay, here. And it looks like we kind of already covered this, but again, check your student email for some resources on your student or your um, accessing some of the, the Cengage materials. Okay, that will be on your, your, your Canvas account. Uh, but definitely check your emails because that's how you're going to activate Cengage. And I, like I said earlier, I did email all of you a, a tutorial resource guide. And then these are some other links that will be in your, your student email as well. Okay, so now I know it's been a long hour or so. I appreciate everybody's uh, participation. And so hopefully Brittany is able to do her drawing. So every student that is on the call, let's see here. Okay, it looks like Brittany is a little inundated uh, at the moment, but um, we will do the drawing a little bit later on. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we are going to do a brief overview on student success seminar. Um, and so I am the teacher for this individual course, uh, EDU 292 student success seminar, one credit, just a pass or fail. It's not a requirement, but we highly encourage students to take this course. It will be every Tuesday and Thursday, starting January 19th through March 11th, from one to 150 topics to include tutoring skills, study skills, financial literacy. And we'll, at the front end of the course, we're gonna do a quick overview on Canvas, Zoom, and Jix. Okay, so uh, if you're a Wolf Point student, or if you live over on the west side of the, the reservation, you would be in uh, the Dumont building. Dumont building, it says uh, room 109, but that's the public computer lab. And then someone like David James will be over there to make sure that the, the room is open, all the computers on, kind of walk you through everything. Um, and then I will be at the JES public computer lab in Poplar, and then I'll kind of go over everything. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna utilize um, Zoom video conferencing. Well, everyone will have a computer, We'll be able to walk through all of the um, the how tos uh, introductions, all that good stuff as we walk through. And, it, and it's not meant to be a heavy academic course. It's just meant to be a overview on some basic things that you could expect on your first year of being a student at the college. So again, I would encourage you to register for that course if you haven't already. Um, super helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, and if Dave is on Elijah, the call, uh, yes question so if you we have a laptop do we bring a laptop to that class as well or do we just come and use the computers there to school it's really up to you i would encourage you to bring your own laptop just because okay. um you're, you're already familiar with your equipment there's no lagging issues you'll be ready to go but it's really up to you okay thank you yeah thank you. Great, great question great question any other questions out there let's see somebody put something in the chat and then Cengage. Elijah? Yes. Oh, I'm ready for the drawing whenever you are. Sorry. Oh, okay. 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 Um, so we'll go back to 
drawing. So we have, we will do two Kindle Fire drawings. Um, and our trusty sidekick, Brittany, has a, um, has the names of the student, I'm assuming. Um, are you able to get on Facebook and see who's um, a student out there as well? I think I have everybody on Facebook. If I'm missing anybody, just let me know. Okay, so if you're able to put that into your spinner, we'll do two drawings. Um, and if you can share your screen, I will allow you to, to share. Let's see. Make co-host. Okay. Okay, so if I allowed you to share your screen, Brittany, so if you could. Okay. Can you guys see it? Yeah, we can see it. Okay. Everybody that's registered, your name is in the spindle. We will do two drawings for a Kindle Fire, so. Do a drum roll here. No. No. Okay, I'll go ahead and spin. No, not what I'm looking for. Okay. Okay, it looks like winner, winner, chicken dinner, Michael James. Congratulations. You can retrieve your prize you. at Student Services. Congratulations. So we'll do one more, Brittany, and then we'll. Wow, thank you. <laughs> All right, congratulations to Lori Plummer. You are the winner of a Kindle Fire tablet. Congratulations, you can claim your prize at Student Services. So again, congratulations. What we're gonna do, um, everybody that's on the call, we're gonna take a, what time is it right now? We'll take a seven minute break. We'll come back at about 10.30 and then we'll kind of plow through the rest of this real quick. I appreciate everybody's uh, participation and patience. Um, so yeah, just, just hang out on the call and then we'll start back at 10.30.
Okay, testing, testing. I think we are about ready to rock and roll for the, the last half here. Okay. Okay, ladies and gem gentlemen, I think we'll get started here. Um, our agenda, we're going to kind of be fluid and kind of try and uh, adjust a little bit on the fly here. We do have some uh, presenters that I think it's super important that we make time to um, allow them to uh, speak a little bit further on uh, Cengage, the, the books, because this is a new thing that we're doing, and I want to make sure that... Um, students have a, a pretty clear idea of what um what's going on with with our book situation and so there's a a lady i'll let her introduce herself as soon as i can make her co-host okay i want to introduce uh nadine dunning if she could um introduce herself we could get a little overview on the Cengage product. Sure, so thank you so much for having me on today. I'm so honored to be part of your student um, training day. It's so nice to um, see everyone and meet everyone. And um, we're certainly here for anything that you need. Um, so Fort Peck Community College this semester will be utilizing um, Cengage Unlimited. Um, which essentially it, it allows you as the student to have access to our entire catalog that we offer. Um, so you can access all of your materials through Cengage um, and you will access this through Canvas. Um, so I can show you um, a few slides that I prepared. And we are also available for anything that you need. Um, so if you have any questions at all going through this process, knowing that um, you know this is all new. Okay. So just making sure that everybody can see my screen. Yep, looks good. Okay. So just going through this really quickly, it's only a couple of slides, but I really wanted to be sure that you had everything needed to get started on the right foot next week. So just so everybody, um, in addition to all of the wonderful scholarships and everything, I wanted to just be clear that there is no additional charge for Cengage Unlimited. Um, so everything is included, even if you don't use a Cengage book. So one of your courses that maybe is still using um, a print book or um, another specific publisher, you can always look in Cengage Unlimited for any materials um, in addition. So there's also study guides and flashcards. We also have a career center that you can go in um, and look at some potential um, career opportunities, just looking at across the country where that particular career may be um, available. Um, you do not have to buy anything else. Um, everything is through Canvas. Um, and so again, really accessing everything through your Canvas page. You will have links that look similar to this that may say Cengage Unlimited or MindTap. You're going to click on one of these links. Okay, and it will be the same even if you're using just an ebook. So some of our products have what we call courseware, which is MindTap or Cengage Now, um, WebAssign, or there's also eBooks. So you'll access both the same way through Canvas. So you'll click on one of the links and then it's going to take you to a registration page, okay? This is really important. This is the only time that you're gonna see this additional page. So you'll fill out all of your information. I highly recommend using your school email address, as long as it's the email address that you check the most. Um, and there is an opportunity for you as well to put a secondary email if you needed to put your personal as well. 
So you'll go and enter this information. Um, you'll do this once, and once you have completed that, you are completely signed in, okay? If you already have a Cengage account, this is what it will look like for you. So you'll go in and you'll, you'll enter your email address that you used previously, okay? And then you're brought directly into your content. Um, so it, it should look very similar to this for you. Um, and you'll see here on the left side of the, the page is where these extra resources that I was talking about. So you can come in and browse the catalog. So if you want to, um, you know, come in and look at some additional materials for any of the other courses that you're taking, or maybe you have an interest in something outside of what you're currently studying, you're certainly not limited. And we, um, we, we would welcome you to come in and search for things um, as you need. We also have 24-7 uh, um, technical support. I'll make sure to send all of this information out so that it can be sent to you as well. Um, this is um, our support, so uh, support.cengage.com. Um, we also have this special link for students using institutional access. Okay, um, so there's also a chat if you are working on something at night and, and are having technical difficulties, you can always um, chat with us or call support. We also have a um, system dashboard that allows you to check whether or not the systems or the any of the difficulties that you may be encountering are maybe due to um, internet, all of us being online at the same time, you can always check our systems online here. Um, so it's techcheck.cengage.com. And that is really it, it's super easy. We're again, we are so excited um, and just really, really um, proud of everything that Fort Peck Community College is doing to make um, education accessible for their students. So happy to be here. We are um, here on the same team to help you be successful as well. Okay, awesome. Nadine, are there any questions specifically for Nadine out there on in the chat? You can utilize the chat. If not, uh, we can always address it later on. If uh, you're any, unable to, to share your, your mic, that, that, that's totally okay. So again, thank you, Nadine. Uh, super helpful. Okay, we'll thank you so much. Yep. We'll get back to, okay, so we did the drawing. Congratulations. I think we need to add, I think, Sue Parker to that list next time. Brittany, looks like she wasn't uh, on the list for the next drawing. We'll, we'll try and make that right with Sue Parker. We apologize about that, Sue. Doing our best here to stay on top of things. So uh, staying true to the presentation, we again, we did an overview on student success seminar, why it's important. Uh, I would highly encourage uh, brand new students to register for the course. Uh, it only takes not even an hour every Tuesday and Thursday, and it's only for a half a semester. It's not even a full semester. So um, super helpful. If you have any questions, let me know on, about what that all entails, but we'll get you started on the right track. Okay, uh, emergency student aid. Um, Elijah, before we get too far, we have a question that when will students have access to Cengage? Okay, good question, good question. So it's my understanding that they will have access to it immediately as soon as they have access to their courses. So not putting the cart before the horse, I believe as soon as the, the all the courses are loaded up into Canvas, or all the students are registered in the Canvas site, they're ready to go, is my understanding. I think certain um, faculty members have to publish their courses first, but Carrie, do you have any additional insight into that? Um, a majority of them started publishing yesterday after we got updates made and changes made into their Canvas and they were still working on it. I do know, and, and if Billy is still on here, that they were doing that a little different, that Jack was gonna upload the students versus the faculty individually. Yep. So um, huh. I, I can inquire to faculty which haven't published their courses as of this morning. Okay. Um, 
Carrie and Elijah. Um, <clears throat> so when we set the courses up, uh, we put a start date and an end date for the courses. And as, whatever the start date is, I think most of us put um, Monday, even though we don't start classes until Tuesday, just so they could um, browse around and look at their courses if they want to on Monday before we get started on Tuesday. So um, whatever that start date is that we entered, and I think most of us said did it for um, Monday, um, they can go in and look at their material, which is a really good idea. Okay, awesome. That, that's a super helpful. So, so hey, Amelia, other, yeah. So, okay, so Cengage, I already have um, an account with them and everything. So or do we have to like go see Olivia for an access code again? Or is our access code from last semester good? Or how does that work? It's my understanding that will go to your student email. Okay, so we'll get everything for each yes. course. But I will definitely follow up on that question specifically. There's okay. no access codes this semester. I believe you will get one email and Nadine can jump in on this that provides you access to oh, everything. No access Once you, is what Nadine yep. said in the chat box. So, so we no just go into Cengage and type in our course and download it? Correct. Yes, so you'll access everything in Canvas. So your okay. first, yep, so go into your Canvas course and you'll click oh, okay. on one of the Cengage links. Oh, 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 so it's perfect. all directly integrated right into Canvas. There's no access code. Okay, so the best way to log into Cengage would be through our Canvas? That is the only way, yes. Okay. All right, perfect. Thank you. Good question, Darcy. Thank you. Thank you for the explanation, Nadine. Okay, any other questions related to that? Okay. Just one other thing. I do think Elijah plans on sending out the easy quick start guide to for Cengage for all new students and returning students. So that will be in your email on how to access that as well. Wow. Correct. Early in the presentation, uh, I, I did let everybody know that whoever just hopped on the call or on Facebook, check your student emails at a, about 830 Mountain Time. I sent an email out to every student that was enrolled as of this morning. There was a PDF document. It's a two page document. Send it out. I also sent it out to our student services staff, but that's a helpful guide. So if you have any questions, just refer to that again. Check your emails. Um, Elijah and any students that are on the Zoom right now. Uh, those of us that are teaching um, using Cengage, all Cengage material for our courses and are teaching online, we will be um, doing a tutorial for each one of our classes the first week. Okay, awesome. To make sure that students know how to go in and access, how to get registered. Great, great. So that'll probably be embedded right in their individual Canvas course, right? Yes, that's correct, Elijah. Okay, awesome, awesome. And so students Elijah, that aren't familiar with Canvas, oh, what's that? Sorry, sorry, Elijah, this is Sasha. I just wanted to interrupt just for a second too and let people know that for me personally, I was able to add any students who had already um, been on Canvas last semester um, myself. Uh, so anybody who's out there who might be listening who has already in one of my classes last semester, you just have to go into your student email and accept my invitation. So just wanted to get that out there. Okay, awesome. Thank you for sharing that. So, but just as a recap, if I'm hearing everybody correctly, um, when the individual instructors, faculty members um, set the start date for their individual courses, and it sounds like Monday was the agreed upon time, that's when you'll be able to access uh, the Canvas, individual Canvas course whether it's business 101 or whichever course, and then you'll be able to access your, your Cengage um, eBooks as well. So, okay, uh, any other questions related to that? Okay, so sure. when will courses be available in Canvas? Uh, looks like courses will be available via Canvas on Monday, according to VP of Academics, Carrie Schumacher. So. Monday, uh, even though that's a holiday and we don't have class, classes technically start on Tuesday, the 19th, but on the 18th, you should have access to all of that stuff. That is the published date Billy is referring to, yeah, which is Monday. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so I guess what we'll do is we'll, we'll slide to the next part of the presentation. Um, 
for emergency student aid. I think um, there was a DreamKeeper site, which this link right here is referring to. So if you click on this link, are you guys able to see? Let's see, I wonder what you guys are able to actually see here. Uh, okay, when you click this link, it will redirect you to this. And from here, you're able to create an account. And this particular um, emergency student aid program is called Dream Keepers. Dream Keepers. And so, as you can see, there are some eligibility requirements. Um, you have to document whatever your financial emergency is. You need a cumulative GPA of 2.0. If you're a brand new student, you don't have a GPA yet. So we waive that requirement. Um, and then you got to be a current student, obviously, and you need to be at least six credits or more, which is half time. And we do require that you be degree seeking. And then in general, the way the process works, you create an account. If you've already created an account, you could submit multiple applications. Um, but it's like, like an email. It's like logging into Facebook. You create a user ID and a password, and you can check it at your leisure as long as you have access to the internet. Uh, but a lot of this is tied to your student email. Again, you need to know how to access your student email, how to activate the account and whatnot. So uh, please get familiar with that. Um, and then other important thing is usually we cap it at $1,000. So if you're a full-time student, you cap out at 1000 If you're less than that, but yet you're still eligible, six credits up to 11 credits, usually that, that caps, that ceiling per individual award is 500 But then again, that is... Um, no funding will go directly to the student. It's third party billing. So let's say if you got a flat tire, man, you're cruising down the road, man, you ran over a nail, you got somebody angry, they, they, they stabbed your tires, they gashed your tires, you, you can't cruise anymore. What are you going to do? You got to go to the tire shop and get an estimate. And then you upload that to your, your account. And then we verify, we have someone like, um, Brittany or one of our staff members will verify your application, make sure you indeed are eligible and that you have your documentation in order and that we will notify you via the email uh, if you're eligible. If you are a little confused about how that process works, you can just come over to student services and we'll walk you right through it on one of these computers. Um, and then that check will go directly to the vendor. Okay, and then that way there's no money going directly to the students, but we'll still be able to address your emergency needs, whatever those are. Um, so just to let you know that is something that we want to do uh, provide, but unfortunately there is no funding in this account right now. Usually we get some funding towards the back end of January, first part of February. Uh, we will make some announcements when we're accepting applications. However, uh, I'm just checking some chat messages okay i will address some of your questions michael it looks like carrie addressed it please complete one answer for okay we will we are still accepting certain uh, requests for emergency aid uh, at student services so contact our staff members Brittany, myself um, and explain the nature of your request. It'll still be a committee decision. We still have the same eligibility requirements as outlined in this, this, um, this site. We have a different funding source, so um, we will be able to address certain needs, but again, it will be on an ad, uh, individual basis. And so just to let you know, until this site is funding, uh, is operationalized, uh, that will be our process. Just contact us and we'll work with you individually, so. Stop share and we'll go back to presentation. Okay, so free laptop and internet eligibility, uh, degree seeking and six credits. Uh, again, you will need to fill out the student profile. If you complete the student profile, 
there's a couple questions in there that will let us know if you need access to the internet, if you don't have access, if you don't have access to a computer or laptop to do homework remotely. Obviously, if we have remote classes, you need to have those. And so that's our way of, of knowing. Um, if for whatever reason, uh, something happens, just come over to student services and talk to me, talk to any of our staff, especially Brittany Alden at the reception area of student services, uh, 406-768-6370. Give us a call, uh, shoot us an email. We're in the directory um, and we'll be able to um, put you on the list. And the way the laptops work is again, if you're degree seeking six credits, we do have some laptops available. Uh, for the internet, it's a little different there. There's only certain areas that we can even provide internet. Uh, we have an agreement with Nemont, so it's within their, their service location. So if you're not within the, the Nemont service location, no internet, unfortunately. So um, again, talk to student services staff if you have any questions, if you need to get on that list, and we'll, we'll definitely try and work with you. Any other questions related to that? Um, I just had a quick question, Elijah. Um, I talked to you before, I think it was like in a Senate meeting um, about um, uh, the internet not being in my name, but I'm the student. And okay. so you had said something about maybe if um, my address matched the bill that we could still maybe, I could still maybe get some help. Did you, but you, I don't think I ever heard back from you about that. Did you ever find out anything about that? I think we can make that work as long as it's at your, uh, your official um, place of residence that is on our, our student records that we have for records for you. So should I just stop um, in and talk with yeah, Brittany? Yeah, stop and okay, talk okay. to Brittany. Uh, thank you for bringing that up. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll definitely try and work with you on that. Okay, thank you. Okay. If there's no other questions. We'll just keep humming along here. Let's see here. Okay. So Canvas Learning Management System Overview. There's a lot of acronyms around here. You'll see that all the time. LMS, Learning Management System. AICF, American Indian College Fund. AHEC, American Indian Higher Education Consortium. So uh, I think I, I developed a, a little, a cool little tutorial. I will share that at this moment. I can find it. Okay, go to share. Hello, everybody. My name is Elijah Hopkins. I'm the Vice President for Student Services here. Everybody at can hear that, okay? College. Um, and I want to create a quick video as a tutorial, a guide uh, for students, even employees, as we guide students to getting them to be familiar with uh, the new Canvas LMS system. LMS stands for Learning Management System. It's super important that we get familiar with um, this product because it's going to be the way that all of our classes, for the most part, are going to be delivered through this, this learning management system, um, especially in a hybrid online environment. So um, just so you know, every student will have your own account and you need to know how to access what it does. And this video will hopefully help explain that. So the first logical place to start is what is Canvas and then where, where do we access it? So if you go to our, our webpage, fpcc.edu, uh, this is the best place to start. Um, and then right at the top, there's a hot link, FPCC Canvas. So all students, we would direct you to this link. It'll redirect you right to here. Here's the actual web address. So when you get to this point, if you're a first time user and you've never been in Canvas with your ID and password yet, first time, right where it says ID number, put your student ID number. That's specific for you, okay? And then again, if you're a first time user and you've never been in here, click forgot password first. This is the first time you'll have to do that. 
And at that point, a temporary password will be sent to your student email address. So get into your student email address, you'll, you'll activate your, your account with that, uh, that temporary password. And at that point, you can create a new password. That's how you'll access it. And then in the future, if you ever forget your password, you know where to go and you know how to get it again. So and that's how you'll log in. And then at that point, uh, I think the best place to get you started is with a, a quick student orientation video. Um, let's see here, we'll have to stop the share real quick. And just so you get some audio. Welcome to your Canvas online classroom. Let's take a look around so you're familiar with where to find the things you want to do and access your important course information. When you first log in, you'll find yourself on the dashboard. This view will show you course cards for each of your current courses. The course cards show you the name of the course and the term. The icons also show you some information about what's in the course. For example, this one shows me there are course announcements and discussions. You can click on any card to enter the course and get to work. On the right side of the dashboard, you can see your to-do list. This will show you assignments, quizzes, and discussions that have a due date. It's important to remember that not every course activity will show on this list, just the items that have a due date set in Canvas. For this reason, you can't rely on this list to show you everything you need to do in your course. Be sure to read the syllabus and course materials carefully to find requirements that aren't set up with a due date in Canvas. When you find them, Consider adding them to your course calendar yourself, as we'll see later. For example, the to-do list may show a quiz that needs to be taken, but you may still need to read a chapter or watch a video before you can complete the quiz. Scrolling down, you also have a coming up list. This will show you upcoming items from your Canvas calendar. There are some things that you can customize on the dashboard. You can click this menu button at the top right corner of the course card to give the course a custom nickname and color. Additionally, clicking on the Settings button above will allow you to change the dashboard from the Course Card view to Recent Activity. This view will show you a summary of recent assignment feedback, course announcements, discussion posts, and other course activity. Keep in mind that your dashboard doesn't show you all your Canvas courses, just your current active courses. To find other courses and set which ones will show on your dashboard, click the Courses icon on the left and click the All Courses link. This will show you all the courses you're in or ever have been in. Current courses are at the top and past enrollments are listed below. Click the star icon on the left to select which courses you want to show or remove from your dashboard view. The items in the blue bar on the left of the screen are your global navigation items. These items are part of Canvas, but not specific to any one course. Next, let's take a look at your account settings. Click account and click profile. Click the Edit button to set up your profile. You can add a picture of yourself, edit your display name, and add biographic information and links you want your classmates and instructors to have. Save your profile information and click Settings from the menu. Your account settings are an important part of keeping up with course communications. Here you can add additional email addresses that you'd like to be notified at. If you've set up the mobile app, you'll see that here under Other Contacts. And you can even set up your phone to receive text message notifications here as well. You can also choose to link up any of these web services. Once you've set up all the different ways Canvas can contact you, click Notifications to customize when and where it will notify you. In the Notifications page, you can be specific about what you want to be notified about, how often, and on which device. For email, you can choose to be notified right away, with a daily summary, with a weekly summary, or not at all. In the second column, you can choose what to be notified about in the Canvas app. You will need to set this up on your device first. And if you set up a text message number, that will show up in a third column on the right. Some notifications I choose to leave turned off because I'll see them in my course. And some, I'm okay getting an email summary at the end of the day, like when an assignment's been graded or my instructor left a submission comment. But there are a few things that I recommend setting immediate notifications for, specifically when your teacher posts a new course announcement and when someone sends you a conversation message. That's like an email message in Canvas. Those things you want to be up to date on all the time. 
Discussion posts might be a good one to turn on in the Canvas app. This will send you a notification when someone posts on a discussion topic you're subscribed to. Then you can even respond right away in the app if you have the time. Next, let's take a look at your Canvas calendar. Click Calendar on your global navigation menu. The calendar will show you items that have a due date, like assignments, quizzes, and discussions. As I mentioned before, this is where you can add your own custom calendar events by clicking on the plus button or just clicking on the day you want to add an event. This is useful if you want to remember to do something, like read a chapter in your book. If you need to post on a class discussion on Tuesday, even if it's not due until Friday, or if you have something due in class that doesn't have a due date set in Canvas. Remember that the Canvas calendar will only show you the final due dates by default, not the preparatory steps leading up to it, so it's wise to add those yourself. You can view your calendar in either weekly, monthly, or agenda view, and your instructor might use the scheduler tool to schedule appointments for something like exam review or class presentations. You can filter your calendar by turning courses on and off by clicking on the color-coded boxes next to the course name. And finally, if you use another calendar program like Google Calendar, Outlook, or iCal, you can subscribe to your Canvas calendar in your other program using the calendar feed link. The Inbox tool is where you can see your conversation messages. This is like email inside of Canvas. Select a message on the left to read it. If you have too many messages, you can filter them by course or by other criteria like starred or unread. The tools across the top allow you to start a new message, reply, archive, and delete your messages. You can even search them to find the information you're looking for. When writing a new message, first select the course the message is about, then choose the recipients from the directory. You can send messages to your instructor and other students in your course through Canvas. You can even add attachments and videos to your messages. Let's take a look inside one of the courses. We'll start by looking at some of the basic parts of the homepage before moving on. On the left is your course navigation menu. This is all items that are specific to this course. And on the right side, we have the to do and coming up lists again, but this time with just the items from this course. In the center is the main content area. Here you will usually see a welcome message or some basic course information. All instructors may build their course slightly differently, so be sure to read the homepage content carefully and look for instructions on how they want you to get started. In this case, the instructor has given us a nice Start Here button. Here, the button has taken us to the module view. If the instructor hasn't given you a clear path to get started, you can always come straight to the module view by clicking on the module button in the course navigation. Modules are the primary way of organizing your course content. Sometimes modules will be organized by subjects, chapters in the textbook, or by weeks. Here we have an orientation module followed by the week two module. So it appears that this instructor has organized his course modules by weeks. Modules are a way for an instructor to guide you through the course content in order. In this example, you're expected to view the week two overview, do the module one reading, and view the module one lecture before taking the module one quiz. The first item in this module is the syllabus information, followed by an introduction video page and a discussion. Let's take a look. Here's the syllabus information page. I can read through all this important course information, and then at the bottom of the page, click the next button to move on to the next item in the module. Here we see the introduction video as promised. At the bottom of this page, we see there is a next button to move to the next item in the module, as well as a previous button if we need to go back one item. You will always have a next and previous buttons at the bottom of the page to move through your module items. Looking back at the module view, we can see that there are several different icons that represent different types of module items, like content pages, discussions, quizzes, and assignments. You may also notice that the week three module is locked because I need to finish week two first. It's also important to keep track of your grades in your course. Click the grades button in the course navigation to see your progress. In the grades view, we can see all the graded items in the course listed by due dates. We can see the due dates, the status, the score, and the possible points. If your instructor has set up weighted assignment groups, you'll be able to see that on the right side. The grades view is also interactive. You can enter temporary what-if scores to see how specific scores might affect your overall grade. For example, if I get full points on this first assignment, I would have an A in the class. 
but if I only score 20, I would have a C. Ugh, I better study. Our instructor put the syllabus information in the orientation module, but you can also access this information by clicking the Syllabus Tool button in the course navigation. This is a great tool because it shows you so much information about the course all in one place. In the center, you have the syllabus information that the instructor has provided. On the right side, you'll see a summary view calendar showing what dates have items due, and a list of the assignment group weights. Scrolling down, we have a course summary listing all the items that are graded in Canvas, sorted by due date. Between the module content, course calendar, course announcements, syllabus, and email and mobile notifications, you'll always know what you need to do to be successful in your Canvas course. Finally, if you ever do need help in your course, you can come to the bottom of the global navigation area and click the Help button. Here you can ask your instructor important. a question by sending them an inbox message. That Report the problem straight to Canvas if you think it's a technology these. problem. Call or chat them. with the 24-7 Canvas support. Or search the Canvas guides to learn more. The Canvas guides are a series of print and video tutorials that can show you all you would ever need to know about how Canvas works. It's usually a good idea to start there if you're having a problem. Then message the instructor if you can't find the answer. Thanks for joining me on this tour of your Canvas online classroom. I know we've talked about a lot of things, so feel free to come back and visit. The tag... Okay, so I think... That's probably, uh, I'll get back to regularly scheduled programming here with the PowerPoint. Okay, so hopefully everybody can see the PowerPoint. Uh, okay, so also be checking your emails. There's a, a course, if you so desire, if you take Student Success Seminar, you will be taking the course. It's a little mini course developed by Canvas. Um, I will be sending this to your email. Here's the link. So if you go there, it's just really a, an in-depth, um, mini course designed to get you familiar with all the ins and outs, the bells and whistles of Canvas, because it's a, it's a dynamic program. Um, I, I've used it in coursework at the University of Minnesota, so I'm kind of already familiar with some of it, but you can do a lot. Um, we're utilizing Zoom video conferencing, but each individual course, you can do uh, videos within the course. It's a, a video, video and capability built into the individual courses. There's email, there's calendars. I mean, as you can tell from the presentation, there's a lot to it. Um, there's also an app. If you're unaware, if you go to, if you're an Apple user or Android user, just go to the app store and type in student canvas, student canvas. And then when you get there, you download the app, you put in um, the school name. Okay, you find school name, you can download it on your phone and you have complete access to all your courses on your phone. You can submit assignments. I do it all the time. Um, same thing with uh, teachers. They can download the, the teacher version, but that's a different app. But for students, uh, look for Student Canvas and find your, our school, Fort Peck Community College, and you can have access to it wherever you go mobily. But again, that, that link will be sent to your, your student email if you do want to take the course. It's self-paced. It's not graded. No one's going to... Um, fail you if you don't complete it, but it's really meant to be more of a resource guide. So definitely be on the lookout for that. Okay. So student emails and free Microsoft Word app, how to access. Um, originally, I did create a, a video, but what I'll do is I'll just show you on the computer here. Okay, so let's say you go to um, your email, you get in, it'll look like this. You click on this and all of a sudden right over here on the left side of the screen, it says Microsoft Word. 
Okay, so from here, you are able to access online a Word document. And that's a super important feature of being a student. Obviously, most of your coursework is going to require you have a uh, be able to write papers. And so it's always an issue um, if you have a, a version of a, a Microsoft Office Online installed on your computers. Um, but if you want to use that, great. A lot of times people have them built into their old computers. They're more familiar with that. But if you're ever in a pinch, and if you, especially with those of you that are receiving the free laptops, once you get your student email, you go into that left side where that little square is, and all these apps are built in free for being an Office 365 user. Okay. And so I would highly recommend you get familiar with how to utilize the, the Word document, but it's all online. So you won't be able to access it offline which is fine because most of us should be able to have access to the internet for our coursework anyways, then you're always archiving it. Okay, same thing with Excel, PowerPoint. Um, this other thing called OneDrive, it's a shared drive folder. So later on, if you get, anybody has any questions, you can come over to Student Services, we'll give you a walkthrough on it. But just so you know that it's there, different emails have different terms for their, their shared drive folders, but OneDrive is a way for you to archive online assignments, uh, any documents that you need. You can upload them. That way you can always have access to them. So that way if you're at home and you're like, dang, I forgot, you can't use the, the dog ate my homework trick. The teacher will be like, what are you talking about? You should have put it on your OneDrive. So uh, just a little FYI, it's, it's another tool in your arsenal. No one has to use it, obviously, but it's um, something that I think is, is really helpful. Um, any questions on this part? Okay, let's see any questions. So I will return back to the presentation. And actually what I'm going to do, how to access. I should have started with that one. But like anything else, fpcc.edu, the Fort Peck Community College homepage, should really be your go-to one-stop shop. We're, we're trying to design things this way so that way students can go to one place and they can access everything that they need. So like in the previous discussion, your, your Canvas link, that's how you access it right here. Your FPCC um, uh, email for employees and for students, this is where you go, you can access it. And once you got it, you can bookmark it on the top of your your internet browser, whichever one you use, I would highly recommend that you use and download a Google Chrome. We have a lot less issues with the cookies and, and uh, different issues related to um, utilizing the platform. So, um, so unless there's any comments, questions on that, I wanted to let you guys know how to access, why it's so important to utilize and check your student email to activate because it's tied into Canvas, it's tied into uh, Cengage, uh, super important. Um, stop the share. Then we will get back to the presentation. Okay, so David James, are you on the, the call? This is where David shines in this part, Jix. Hello, Elijah. <laughs> Hello, students. So I'm going to give you a quick overview of Jix. It's just going to be really quick, and I'm going to share my screen with you. I'll make you a co-host, Dave, so that way you can, um, you're allowed to share, I guess. So one oh, okay. I'm going to find your name on the, the list here. Co-host. Okay, now you should be able to, unless you're sharing a video, you'll have to add sound, but if you're just going to share your screen, you should be good to go. Can you guys see my screen? Oh, we can see it. Okay. So on the FPCC website, uh, you'll see it's like Elijah was saying, it's one shop stop or stop for everything. So if you scroll down here, 
you'll see my FPCC Dix. You click that. And up here, I want you to put in your student ID number. And you should have gotten that from Michelle or Jackie when you registered with a password. And you enter your password and log in. So pretty much anything you're gonna do in here as a student and you're more than welcome to look around at the, all the other stuff here, but you wanna click on students. And as you'll see down here, your course schedule will be available to you and you click view details. And it should be right here and you can print that out if you like. I'm gonna go back to reports and forms over here and this is another important one here. Your unofficial transcript is located right here. Uh, I don't have one on here right now, but if you click that, you'll see a your unofficial transcript and you can print that out too. FPCC does not send out grades through the mail anymore. So if you want to know what your grades are at midterms or finals, you would click right here and make sure you have the right semester and you can view those and you can print those out also. Also on here is, uh, let me go back here, is your student account information. So if you have any balances due or at FPCC or a course or fee statement that you need to print out, you can click this right here and it will show you what uh, uh, account balance is at Fort Peck Community College. Uh, I suggest that you look around and look at everything else, but pretty much everything that is relevant is what I just showed you. So right under students and you're good to go. You can go from there, reports and forms and your class schedules and you're good to go. Awesome. And that's all I have. All right, thanks Dave. Is there any questions for Dave? Okay, if there's no questions for Dave, we'll continue on here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we are going to take a we'll take about a five minute break. So at eleven twenty two on my phone, eleven twenty two. It's eleven seventeen now. We'll get started. Uh, we'll, we'll announce the the winners of the drawing, and we'll finish up the last part of the agenda. So, see you in five minutes.
Okay, I think we'll get started here. We'll do the drawing here in a minute or two, but a couple quick announcements. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Brittany wanted to be able to share a few things, but unfortunately where she was uh, located is pretty loud out there. So she asked me to share a few things that she wasn't able to comment on, but definitely for your FAFSA. So back to the FAFSA discussion, um, it's really important that you, after you create your account, you log back in, you start with your 2020-2021 FAFSA. Okay, you will need the, your 2018 taxes, 2018. Um, apply for FAFSA if you're 90 credits or less. So um, there's a thing in financial aid because we're a, a two-year college, we receive, uh, our students can receive Pell Grant, but there's some uh, legislation, some uh, regulatory things that make it to where you can only get Pell Grant at our institution if you have 90 um, credits or less. Okay, it's based on this formula. Um, basically, it's like, um, it takes, for two-year degrees, it's about 60 credits to get a two-year degree. They will fund you that and another 50% of that with Pell Grant, they'll fund you. And so if you've had accumulated more than 90 credits at any other institution or ours, you are no longer eligible for Pell Grant. Uh, we don't control that, that's what the feds say. And so I just want everybody to be aware of that. Um, you can still apply, that just means that you won't get any from us. Um, part of that is a protection for students. So that way you save some of your Pell Grant for when you, if you make a transfer, we want you to transfer to go and get a, um, a four-year de um, degree, a bachelor's degree, maybe at another institution. And that way, if you, you didn't plow through all of your Pell Grant, you still have some left to help pay for your education. So super important on that. Um, let's see what else. I think those are the main things she wanted me to cover. So Brittany, I think I'll allow you to share your screen and then we'll do the drawing. We have another two um, Kindle fires, but I guess before we do that, she did ask me to those of you that are on Facebook and that are not on the Zoom call, if you could put your name in the comment section, because right now she has no way to tell based off of who's a student on Facebook world, unless that they put their name, their full name in the comment section. So I'll give you guys a few minutes to do that and then give her a minute or so to make sure that she can put it into the spinning wheel. But while she's doing that, is there any questions? Michael, when will the T98 come out for students? I mean, for tax purposes. A uh, great question. I do not have an answer for that. Um, if Lynette's on the call, she might be able to address that, but we can certainly look into that for you. Okay, so are we good to go, Brittany? Sarah Small raised your hand. Yes, Sarah. Yeah, hi. Is spring term um, just under the current um, kind of stipend uh, that this college is offering, or are they looking to further that, like into summer or fall of next year? Oh, great question. Great question. Right now, uh, the only thing we can say for sure is for the spring semester. Um, there's a, a good chance we could do summer and possibly the fall, um, but there was some funding, um, the feds, the CARES Act, some, some more legislation was, was passed, I believe. And I, it's looking like they might have some additional funding for, for tribal colleges to help us out. So I, we can't say for any, anything right now, for sure, if we can do that, but that was, would be certainly one of our, our top priorities if we were able to secure funding to do so. So, but, and I know um, it's a logical question, um, but we do offer the, the cheapest rate tuition just about in the country that I'm aware of. 
So even if you start off here incurring no no tuition fee fees for spring semester, and yet you still want to finish your degree, we have so many ways to help students. So many scholarships, uh, especially at the American College Fund. You don't have to be a tribal member. Um, a lot of times we have so much money we can't even give it all out to students because there's certain eligibility requirements, and so um, it's. I just want you to let you know that it is um, super feasible for you to continue your education. And we don't offer student loans. That's the other benefit. Like none of our students that graduate from here ever have student loans, unless you go out and seek a personal private loan, but we don't offer them here because our tuition's so, so low. And it's, it's just a benefit, I think, of being one of our students. There was a, another comment from Lynette. She said, by the end of the month. So addressing your original question, Michael, about the T98, by the end of the month, they should be out. So, um, but yeah, uh, does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay, awesome. So I believe, give me a thumbs up, Brittany, if we are good to go on the drawing. Or something in the chat. Looks like she's still sorting, so we'll try and take it easy on Brittany. She's she's our all-star out front there at student services. She's multitasking, so working with students right now as we speak. I think I almost have everybody. Okay. Okay. Well, if that's the case, uh, we'll start the the spinning wheel whenever you are ready, Brittany. And again, we have two two drawings for two Kindle fires. Okay, I'm gonna spin the wheel. Okay. Winner, winner, chicken dinner, Bernice Seminole. Congratulations, you are the winner of a Kindle Fire tablet, redeemable at Student Services. Again, if you are outside of our general service area here on the, the reservation, Fort Peck and Boise Reservation, give us your mailing address and we can send it to you. So um, congratulations, Bernice. And we will do one more. Taz Clark, congratulations. <laughs> Winner of a Kindle Fire tablet. Congratulations, Taz. So we will get started. Thank you again for that, Brittany. You're welcome. Let's see here. Okay. Kindle Fire drawing is in the books. Okay, so. Uh, this is probably the least uh, interesting part of the presentation, but it's some unfortunately we have to cover um, because we are a Title IX receiving institution. We receive Title IV funding. We have to abide by our regulatory body um, and at least let you know how to access uh, certain consumer information. One is the student handbook and another one is our Title IX uh, policies. And so super important that you know how to access the annual security report the drug and alcohol free campus report and the new title IX policy and how we do that is by going to fpcc.edu so i wish i had access real quick here let's see go to share okay so hopefully everybody can see my screen here so one of the easiest ways to access uh, some of the consumer information, but especially Title IX and campus safety information, is if you go to fbcc.edu and you scroll down a little bit where it says consumer information, click on this learn more button, and boom, you're right here. Okay, and so we just released our 2020 calendar year annual security and fire safety report. So if you click on that, it'll take you to this document. 
this is the the year it was published or the the um the statistics the clary act statistics for the calendar year 2020 we won't go into this in great detail but this document gives you an overview on our processes here at the fort peck community college on what, how we um prepare our students and staff for things related to campus safety okay there's a map here's all our statistics or Clary Act reporting, you at least by law, you guys all have to know how to access it. And so that will be sent to your email every semester. It has to get distributed to every employee as well. Part of your um, student success seminar course, um, there is another training related to uh, campus crime and Clary reporting that you will be exposed to. So you can get a little more detailed information on that. We have to keep at least three years of reporting. So we have four, so we're in compliance. There's that. That Again, that report goes everything, how to initiate um, a call if you see a crime on campus, um, if you have any questions related to about the, the security features related on campus, uh, what to report re related to um, sexual harassment, discrimination. Um, there's a whole uh, process outlined in that document and specifically under the new administration this was the new policy adopted by Fort Pitt Community College and approved by the board of directors back in August so read through this um, at your leisure but you need to know at least how to access it but you do have rights as students I am what you call the Fort Pitt Community College Title IX coordinator uh, among my many hats that I wear as the Vice President of Student Services, my job is to be the go-to person if anybody has any questions related to Title IX policies, questions. I have to inform the campus and all the happenings related to Title IX. And there's different uh, local entities outlined in this document, uh, who to contact if there's any issues that you have, law enforcement information, how to report. There's an entire committee that we we have identified if you have any questions um, or issues, concerns, uh, both male and female, you can report any issues to any staff member at the college and there is a process outlined in this document. Um, so, let's see here. And since we're here, all this other good information is right here. Um, student handbook this outlines all the information that you need to know to be a student at the college there are such things as um, student responsibilities so you have uh, basically it's uh, has to do with respecting your, your fellow students respecting the academic atmosphere of the college we cannot be threatening anybody, but you also have rights. So if you're accused of anything, there's a whole process in here to grieve. If you were placed on academic suspension, if you are were accused of any violation of the code of the student code of conduct, it outlines what the process is. Everything related to um, withdrawing from courses, our admissions policies, it's all in this document. So I, I want everyone to be aware of what this is and how it directly impacts you, okay? Um, and since we're on this part, student clubs and organizations, here's our three most active organizations. Student Senate, uh, which is the lead organization, student organization for the college. The president of the Student Senate is Gifford Standing. They serve one year terms. He also is a representative on the Fort Peck Community College Board of Directors. So super important, so we want you guys to be uh, participating again check your emails for the the invite it'll be a zoom invite so all students are welcome to participate i believe there are some vacancies on the the board the student board so if you're interested please let us know i'm an advisor for the the student organization but it's its main thing is to promote the interest of the student body as a whole to be your voice and to have your voice shared at the fort peck community college board of directors level also super important is American in Business Leaders. Uh, as a former business student here at the college, I did participate in the student organization. We will link you up with an advisor. Every student organization has an advisor. 
So more, more than likely it would be a staff member or a faculty member that aligns with that particular student organization, such as a business instructor. Bluestone Indian Club has been dormant for a little while. We are trying to reactivate that. So again, go to the consumer information. If you have any other questions, talk to our staff here at Student Services, and we will do our best to inform you on what options are available. Um, let's see here. There is one other document that I wanted to share. Okay. One other thing I forgot to mention going back is let's say you want to report an incident. There's a process. You can verbally tell anybody anything. But if you have any questions about, hey, this um, employee of the college made me feel very uncomfortable in a uh, threatening manner. He said some things that were very disrespectful. I seen another student push another student. There was uh, an issue related to discrimination on the, the college, or you seen somebody trip and fall. Any of those types of things, you can fill this out anonymously if you choose, but we'd encourage you so we can follow up on it. Put your name, your email, the date of the incident, any contact information that you have, fill this out, press send. And then there will be certain individuals on the campus safety committee that will get this uh, notification. Um, one of the other hats that I wear is the chair of the campus safety committee. We will meet to address any of these um, issues, complaints, reports in a timely manner. You can also download the form here in a PDF document and submit it, print it, um, hand deliver it to any one of our employees at the college, but especially myself or any of our student services staff. Also, uh, Ember runs through at the Dumont building. But for all you virtual students, um, this is your go-to. You can access online. So now you know how to access it online. Okay, looks like we have a few other questions. Okay, yeah, Brittany says, Taz and Bernice Seminole, can you email me your, your address and we can get your prizes to you right away? Uh, B Alden at fpcc.edu is her email. Check the chat box of the Zoom meeting. Michael James and Lori Plummer, can you also do the same? So, and then Michael said, can I just come pick mine up? Certainly, you're more than welcome to do that, Dave. Uh, Michael, just come over to the War Eagle Vision and we will hook you up. Okay, so one other document that I would like to share. Let's see here. Current slide, okay. So hopefully everybody can see this. Um, if th this hasn't been emailed to you, check your student email. I will send this out again, or someone from our department at Student Services will email this to you. But we do our best monthly to send out a student services events calendar for a particular month. And this kind of gives you an overview of kind of what's happening. But you know, every th Thursday, from 3 to 4 p.m., we have what you call a Buffalo Chasers podcast. Uh, it's an open invite to every student and employee of the college. And so if you're a current student, current employee, what we do is I will email out a Zoom invite link, just like how we're meeting right now. And we'll also broadcast it live on Facebook. And what we do with the Buffalo Chasers podcast, I'm just like a co-host. I play a very minimal role. I just kind of make sure that we, we get it up and running and that the, the IT part of it is functional. But one of our um, our cultural advisors at the college, Mr. Tommy Christian, uh, Dekshi Tommy Christian, um, he's a, a cultural resource, so he's a, a valuable part of this uh, this team as we co-host uh, and we talk for an hour from three to four um, about various issues uh, related to mental health. But we are super uh, cognizant of the fact that we need to utilize our our culture as a way to um, address some of the 
the challenges in a um, of trying to thrive and, and be healthy in a, a virtual format, uh, especially in a COVID environment, we're not able to to gather and congregate uh, as we normally do. And so sometimes there's some challenges with being um, healthy and we wanna make sure and be able to have a, an outlet for students to come together and at least listen. And so you, you're more than welcome to join the Zoom call. Just if you're already on the Zoom call, great, you already know how to do it. You do not have to put your name. That's one of the, you get more uh, functionally aware of how to use Zoom. You can have your name be anonymous. You can put your real name in there, whatever you wanna do. Um, but you're welcome to join. You can call in, do the same thing. You can just listen. Uh, if you wanna turn your camera on, great. If you wanna turn your camera on and turn your mic on um, and join the conversation, you're more than welcome. But typically we have a topic and it kind of goes everywhere, but it's all always related to mental health, culture. Um, a lot of times, like for example, we talked about the uh, traditional roles, men's and women's roles. We've talked about uh, uh, the celebration of life uh, just because of uh, Dexy Tommy's background with culture and participating in ceremonies and being a powwow MC. You know, he has some really interesting perspectives and, and part of the discussion is not to tell anybody what to do or, but more or less to just share. And it's more of a conversation. And so I think it's drawn out some really interesting uh, conversations from, from Dexy and different individuals that participate. And it's really a healthy thing. We try and be consistent with that every Thursday from three to four. We'll continue to do that even though class is not in session. So that's just something to be aware of. Um, we do try and have enticements, any students that uh, participate and join the call via Zoom. We try and have a $25 Albertsons food card available that they are able to redeem at student services. So just be aware of that. We try and incentivize it. Um, again, we already talked about uh, student success seminar on the 19th that starts from the 19th through March 11th, I believe. The, uh, on the 18th, we do not have any classes. So Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. So campus will be closed. Uh, and then also the student talking circle. So every Friday from 11 a.m. to noon, we do a what's called a virtual talking circle. And so uh, Mr. Tommy Christian will be in attendance. Certain staff members like myself might be in attendance, but we'll send that uh, Zoom invite out to every student. And again, it's it's different than the podcast because it's confidential and it's the we encourage students to share whatever they want to talk about but nothing is aired on facebook we do not record it we do not um, stream it live so there is a level of anonymity and respect there's a more or less that we're trying to facilitate a culture of respect or hoda so make sure that that's something that you want to participate let us know if you have any technical issues related to accessing the platform, just let us know. But the cool thing is that we're trying to connect virtually no matter where you're at, if you're a distance learning student or if you're right here in campus, you're able to connect with us. We're have to, able to have the same type of uh, conversation. You're able to, to connect because we believe that your mental health is really important to your success. And academics is one function of that, of uh, reaching your goals, but you also need an outlet and a safe place to talk. And so that's why we're, we're trying to do this. And it's really important that we get the word out and your participation is important because you, you guys are all super important to us. And that's how we kind of gauge our success is by your, your, your health and we want to encourage your participation. Well, it looks like there was some chats. I better read these. Okay, I can deliver to as Wolf Point. Okay, it looks like they're talking logistics. Okay. So anyways, unless there's any comments, questions on that, those are, I believe... The last items. Okay. So we are at the back end, the very back end of the presentation. Are there any comments, questions related to the presentation today? Elijah, can yes. I just um, make a comment about the talking circle? Sure. To the students. Um, I've participated in talking circles, and I think that's a great opportunity for you students to be involved in. Um, it's okay, we all need that extra 
bump sometimes. Don't be embarrassed. Don't think that it's, uh, you know, we, we kind of try to tie it to mental health, but we all need that. And it's going to make you a better person for it. So I strongly encourage you guys at least go in and check it out once, you know, it's going to either be for you. It might not be, but go in and check it out and make it your own. It's, it's for you guys, not for us. We want you guys to be the best students. Cause believe me, I was a student for seemed like forever. Um, started at Fort Peck community college, um, went on to my bachelor's, went on to my master's and, you know, I, I didn't have all the support that we're trying to give you guys today. So um, make it your own. Um, the student Senate, our um, student Senate president is um, Gifford Standing. Um, reach out to him and be a part of his team. This is your guys' college. So um, the more active you guys are, the better off the college is gonna be for, for you guys. So um, check it out, check both of them out. Um, check out um, Tommy and Elijah's podcasts. Those are also um, good information for you. So don't be afraid to utilize the services that we're trying to provide because it takes a lot of energy and time from staff and faculty to do these things. So take every opportunity you guys can while you guys are in college. So. Thank you. That's all I wanted to say. All right. Thank you, Lynette. Let's see here. A couple questions in the chat box. Will we get a Zoom invite to our classes? That is really situational. Great question. Um, but it really depends on your individual course and your instructor. So the, the first thing to do is to log into your, your Zoom account. And if you log into your Zoom account, or excuse me, your, your Canvas account. Um, it'll outline weekly, like your announcements, what the process, your syllabus, where they're meeting, because your syllabus is your your guide for the whole course. It lays out by date what your what all the expectations are, the contact information for the instructor, everything. And so in there, they'll give you a, um, an outline of what platform they're using. Some courses might not use Zoom at all. You know, but say, for example, in student success seminar, I will use it every day. No one might not join the call, but I'll have it open. And then as people come in, they're able to join the call and send me messages through the Zoom call or we can talk right in front of everybody. So um, there's a, a possibility, but definitely look in your, your um, Canvas account for any possible Zoom invites. But more than likely, um, you will not get an invite to your student email from an instructor, more than likely not. But I would reach out to the instructor first. But if you do have any questions or you're having any hangups, like, man, I can't even connect the class, you know, I, I'm having a hard time uh, getting feedback from instructor, whatever the issue is, communication issues, get a hold of us here at Student Services and we'll definitely connect you, we'll help, help you get rocking and rolling. And then Grace, for are you guys uh, offering... GED classes this semester uh, and David James, you and Wolf Point on Thursday. Okay, so yes, we do have, um, we call it adult basic ed, uh, adult basic education. Uh, Joanne Stewart is the coordinator and we have another uh, staff member here in Poplar that are available during the week. And so what I will do, Grace, is if you if you go to if you're on Facebook, I know they have. Um, I, I'll send you their information later too. But if you go to Facebook, go to Fort Peck Community College Adult Basic Education. You will find the um, the page. Yeah, it has all their contact information, their hours, and everything, phone number. So definitely check that out. And then David James, he will be in Wolf Point Tuesdays and Thursdays from eight to four thirty. I think he's off the call. He had helped some students, but. Uh, this week, uh, I do not believe he will be there tomorrow. I think he has some obligations here. But starting next week, for the rest of the academic semester, he will be in Wolf Point Tuesdays and Thursdays. So there will be an extra resource to help you out over there for those of you in, in Wolf Point that need to talk to somebody directly. Any other questions? 
Okay. Well, if that's it, uh, no other comments, questions. We'll wrap it up. I appreciate everybody's attendance, participation. Again, we will archive this. It will be on Facebook. I will upload it to our YouTube channel. Those of you that weren't able to um, hear something or got in late, you'll be able to, to check out the orientation later on. So thank you very much. Elijah, everybody. Oh. I just, I just had a quick, just thank you guys for everything you've helped me with. Um, the, I've had a great couple semesters with you guys and you guys have been real helpful to me. Uh, Lin, uh, Lynette, uh, Suzanne, Brittany, just thank you guys for everything with the college, for yep. sure. Yep. Thank you, Darcy. Uh, I could think yep. I could speak on behalf of all of them. If they're on the call, they can, but I know we, uh, we appreciate you. You guys are the reason we have uh, this institution while we have jobs. So we appreciate all your guys' hard work and we're, we're a resource for you guys. Thank yep, you, great. Darcy. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Darcy. Oh. Okay. Until next time.